Welcome to my sewing room. My name is Marnie Freeman and I design and manufacture quilts made from personal items of clothing. A couple of years ago I started teaching classes through the City of Kamloops Parks and Rec program so that others could do it themselves. This is my first quilt tutorial and I'm going to demonstrate the final step which is the quilt binding. I'm going to be making a double binding out of new fabric, 100% cotton. We're going to be using two and a half inch strips of fabric to make our quilt binding. I suggest using new fabric for the binding, but feel free to use anything that you'd like. I would suggest that it not be too stretchy. If you're going to use 100% cotton, you should pre-wash it before you cut your material into strips. We're working with our two and a half inch strips. We're going to place our right sides together and we're going to leave about a quarter of an inch tail sticking out. I'm going to grab my ruler and I am going to use a chalk line. You can also use a pencil. It's entirely up to you. And I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner. Some people prefer to use a pin. That's entirely up to you. But it does anchor it nicely. I'm going to be working with two strips as I'm doing a demonstration, but you will have multiple strips in your binding. To calculate uh, the total yardage, use the perimeter length and add 12 inches, and that should be enough yardage to allow for the tails when you join. We're going to be sewing directly on top of the chalk line. I'm using a very small stitch length, 1.9. And I did not do any back stitching. I've picked up my sewing shears and I am going to cut approximately a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Get rid of my tails and I'm going to press the seam open. It often helps to finger press first. By the way, I've used a neutral color thread. I like to use light gray or cream. In your binding, you're going to have several strips, so there will be several seams to open up. But then you're going to simply take your binding and you are going to press it exactly in half. And it will make a difference if your binding isn't ironed completely in half. You want to make sure that as close as possible you are um, not out, that you are folding it in half. <laughs> 
I like to use a steam setting on my iron, especially if I'm using cottons. Steam isn't recommended for all, all types of fabrics, so just be careful there. And we've just completed our binding. We're going to be sewing our binding onto the quilt back or wrong side. Leave a tail about six inches and start sewing about here. Quarter inch seams and it's up to you whether you'd like to back stitch at the start. You can increase your stitch length to about 2.5 And you're going to continue sewing until a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I eyeball it. And you're going to want a back stitch. When you take it out of your machine, you're going to want to take that strip and put it out at top. And you're going to end up with a 45 degree angle. Now sometimes you accidentally sew a little bit past that quarter of an inch and you can tell because my binding is not lining up exactly with the edge of my quilt. So I'm going to have to trim off, trim a stitch here just to bring it back slightly because it should be exactly in line. And then you're going to fold your binding on top and it will line up with that outer edge. And back in the machine we go. And I'm going to back stitch. This is the smallest quilt I think that I've ever put a binding on, but it is an example. And I ran out of bobbin thread. Okay, we've replaced our bobbin thread and we're going again. See how close I came this time. Goes up to the top. Nah, I didn't do a very good job again. So I'm just going to clip that last stitch with my scissors. Be careful you don't damage the fabric. And I'm going to have to do a couple 
Okay, we're nearing to our last corner. Shot a quarter inch again. Now you're just sewing, I'm going to say 6 to 12 inches away from your original sewing point. And then we're going to take our uh, quilt up to our ironing board. We are going to measure a 2.5 inch overlap between the tails of the binding and it could be just over two and a half if you'd like. It helps me to iron my binding flat again to do the join. So once again, it's, it's very similar to when you make your binding, but you're going to place one strip over the other, right sides together, with about a quarter inch tail. And I would suggest a pin in this particular case. It's a little tight. You can always leave more distance. As this is a qu small quilt sample, I'm only working with a very short distance. And I'm going to mark it with my chalk line. And we're going to head back to the sewing machine. We're back at the sewing machine and we're going to reduce our stitch length down to about 1.9, nice and tiny. This way the threads won't show through when you press the seam open. take out my pin and before I clip the tail off just you know double check and make sure that it's gonna work for you and I sewed it together perfectly so we're gonna proceed back to the ironing board and we'll cut that off and we're just about ready to be finished once again we're gonna trim our seam about a quarter of an inch and iron it open. And then iron it 
and a half. Now sometimes you'll notice that you have to stretch the binding a little bit, but that's okay. Cotton stretches just perfectly the right amount to allow for a nice flat binding and the final sewing over to the machine. Okay, we're back at our machine. We're going to finish that sewing. done the first sewing step. Okay, we're going to turn our quilt over to the right side and we're going to take that binding and we are going to fold it over. Essentially, you're just going to fold it over to just past that sewing line and we're going to do a nice neat top stitch on the edge. I've changed my thread to black and in the bobbin, I've actually put a nylon invisible thread. I find that that works really well in the bobbin and it's invisible from the back side. I'm back to using about a two and a half inch stitch length or you can go a little bit shorter if you'd prefer, that's a preference. When you get to the corners, you're going to just work it in a little and you got a little angle, 45 degree angle, and that's folding over. And you're just gonna wanna catch that underneath your presser foot. And yes, it's a little finicky, but you'll get there. Once that needle just hits that binding from the bottom, you can lift up your presser foot and you can turn it around. And away you go. Now I'm not going to show the rest of, of the sewing in the video, but essentially you're going to continue and you're going to go all the way to the other edge and you'll be complete. I can't quite think of any other sewing tips at this particular time, but if you've taken my course, uh, you will have uh, access to um, a paper hard copy instructions and I would suggest that you uh, also refer to them before you start doing your binding step. Uh, remember, a memory quilt by Marnie, a quilt that tells your story, is a unique way to remember.